Apple and Google and Amazon are actually working together. So soon, everything in your smart home will be able to talk to everything else. Here's why the Matter Alliance matters. I think I used the word finally too much, but allow me this one, finally. Imagine your Apple HomePod being able to control your Nest thermostat. Imagine your Amazon Echo being able to control Samsung SmartThings devices. Wait, that one's been true for a while, but that's the point. Right now, everything in the smart home is so jumbled and confusing. Imagine walking into a hardware store and buying a smart plug. It will probably work with the smart speaker and smart bulbs you already have, maybe. Amazon and Google work with plenty of stuff, Apple, not so much. So if you wanna use your iPhone instead of your smart speaker, here are several extra hoops to jump through. Enter the Matter Alliance. Let's talk about what it is and where it came from, the steps we're seeing so far, and best and worst case scenarios in terms of what comes next. Technically, the Matter Alliance is a connectivity standard, but it's more fun to think of it like a high-powered superhero team up, like the Avengers, of the smart home? Dope and entirely accurate analogies aside, the Matter Alliance already has huge names on board. The most important trio are obviously Apple, Amazon, Google. These three make the smart speakers and the phones that allow most people to control their smart homes. They're the entry points for a lot of people into connected home stuff. The goal of Matter is to make it so that every smart home device can talk to every other smart home device. So if you're shopping for that smart plug, you won't need to worry what it works with. You'll just be able to see the Matter logo and know that it will work with your Amazon Echo or your Nest Hub or your Apple HomePod Mini. Better yet, you won't actually have to worry about maintaining those connections. If you have a lot of smart home stuff now, you might have noticed that after an update, your light bulbs stop talking to your smart speaker and you need to resync them. That shouldn't happen with Matter. It'll get easier for consumers by also making it easier for manufacturers. I mentioned the big three, but think about a tech startup. They'll be able to focus more on the nuts and bolts of the actual product. They don't need to add compatibility and jump through hoops for each of those major platforms. They can just add matter compatibility and they're done and they don't need to worry about alienating huge swaths of their potential fan base. It could also make it easier for startups by letting them skip the part where they make an app. You should be able to set up matter compatible products using your platform of choice. So you don't need to download a dozen different apps and fill your phone with bloat. Use that Amazon app that you use to set up your Echo to also set up your smart lock. Matter Alliance is open source, so it's easy for programmers to access and use the code. It's been in the works for a little while now. It used to be called the Connected Home Over IP or CHIP. While we all love an acronym, Matter Alliance is definitely a better name. And that new name debuted just a couple of months ago as it officially launched. The Connectivity Standards Alliance is on board to make sure the different devices can talk to each other. That alliance also used to go by a different name, Zigbee. If you recognize that name, it's because Zigbee is already built into a bunch of small smart home sensors and plugs because Zigbee takes a lot less power than Wi-Fi. Aside from the big three and Zigbee's new look alliance, here's a handful of other names already on board. SmartThings, Huawei, Comcast, Ikea and Kroger for some reason, Legrand, Sumfi, Signify, so quite a few names covering retail and internet service providers and areas of a smart home. Shortly after Matter went public, we saw the first big concrete steps at Google and Apple's respective developer conferences. At Google I.O., the search giant said that you'll be able to control your Nest Learning thermostat using Apple's HomeKit smart home platform. So you can use your Apple HomePod to change the temperature of your Nest, which is pretty cool. And Google said that you'll be able to use their smart displays and smart speakers to control all Matter products. So they're in, both in terms of giving and receiving commands from Matter. 
In turn, at Apple's WWDC, they announced that Matter will be built into iOS 15, which is the upcoming operating system for iPhones. And they also showed that you'll be able to give commands to Siri using an Ecobee thermostat. And supposedly, Ecobee is just the first third-party device that you'll be able to use to talk to Siri. Now, you still are gonna need to have a HomePod nearby to make that work. Apple's always had a bit of a walled garden approach to the smart home, but at least we're taking baby steps in the right direction, and I admire their dedication to privacy here. They're sending commands to HomePod so that they can process those commands locally. Hopefully Amazon is up next and then we'll really be rolling. To make this work, Matter requires widespread adoption. They're doing and saying the right things to make that possible. And if it's spread out, we could see a more seamless smart home that requires less thought on the part of consumers and less committed resource on the part of startup developers. But the flip side happens if this doesn't keep gaining momentum and adoption. There's a well-known webcomic that talks about how many communication standards there are and how confusing it all is. So they decide to fix the problem by creating one to rule them all, and the end result is just another one added to the pile. Thanks, XKCD. It is early days for Matter, but there are a lot of great signs already. Not only are the big three on board, but they're using their own megaphones to talk about it. So I'm hopeful, maybe even by the end of the year, the smart home could be a more seamless place and have everything working together and rainbows and unicorns and happy dances. And yeah, it's a sweet dream and it could all evaporate, but there's legit reason to think it might actually happen this time. So let me know what you think. Is this actually going to live up to the hype? Is it going to be more or less satisfying than Infinity War and Endgame? Comment below. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.